Hello guys, so welcome back to uh, Sarah's Day Lecture, part two, okay, in which we will talk about common base amplifier. So it's another configuration, you know, different from the common emitter amplifier. Okay, it has different characteristics. And of course, we're gonna take examples on it and see how much is uh, how much it is different from uh, the common emitter amplifier and what is, you know, its basic characteristics. Uh, uh, for that new kind of amplifiers, okay? Again, when we say common something, then there is no input or output at that thing, okay? So here it's a common base. So the input, as we see here, is near uh, the emitter. This is the input part. And the output is near or connected to the collector. Here is the collector and here is our, the, our output. And the base is just common between them, okay? This VVB is actually a DC source just to, uh, you know, bias the transistor to make it work in the active region. Okay, so let's, uh, and yeah, so the input, let's say this, the input, in common base amplifier is connected to the emitter. And the output is connected to the collector. Good. Uh, the steps are exactly the same either in DC or AC. Also for these circuits, we love to uh, use the other kind of, uh, you know, the other uh, circuit uh, or equivalent circuit for transistor. You remember guys, uh, maybe uh, one lecture or two lectures ago, we saw that four, you know, different uh, models for the transistors. And we say that all of them are equivalent. Okay, one of them was, which you used to, to, uh, to use in the common emitter circuits, which you have the base uh, collector and the emitter, you know, in the middle and bottom. Uh, for common base, we usually use uh, other type of uh, 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 models of transistor, AC models. And again, they are all equivalent, but this will make us, this will make analysis easier. In which you have the emitter here, on that side, the collector on that side and the base in uh, uh, bottom, uh, middle bottom. Uh, between emitter and the base, you have uh, a resistance called RE. And RE is equal to VT over IE capital. So we must get it from the DC after solving the DC circuit or the, making the DC analysis, we get IE which is a DC current and, you know, uh, divide uh, VT, which is 25 millivolt by IE, you get RE. And before we continue, if we compare it to R by, R by is VT over IB. So which is bigger? Of course, R by is bigger or RE is smaller than R by because uh, IB is less than IE. So, so just a note because we will use this uh, use this notation sorry observation afterwards. It's so now continue, and between the collector and the base there is an in, uh, and depend, a dependent current source which is alpha IE or IC. So you know guys IC is equal to beta IB or alpha IE. And where is IE here? IE is flowing from that direction in RE. So positive and negative. And if you are interested, IB is going into the base as usual. So IE, IC is going into the base, IB is going into the base, then IE is out of the base. And remember again, all the time, IE is equal to IC plus uh, IB, just to check, okay? There is another version of it. And again, all are equivalent.
Here is the base. Again, here is IB going into the base. And you can call this GM V by, just like you know the other one. And here is again RE. And where is a V by? V by is is a voltage across RE. And again, here is a meter. Uh, here is collector, and here is the base. But remember, V by is positive negative. No, so positive is near the base, negative is near the emitter. You can use either. I usually use the uh, first one. You know, alpha e is like beta IB. But all are the same. All will lead to the same solutions. I mean, okay. So let's let's have an example. We have here uh, in front of us a circuit. So let's apply, let's analyze it in AC, okay, to see the differences, our input, our output, uh, AV, you know, overall gain, uh, and then compare that to uh, the common emitter and make some or drive some observations, very important observations about common base amplifiers. So let's drive the AC circuit. So again, remember, in AC, all capacitors are short, are short. Cancel all DC uh, sources. So we have here two DC sources. We have VCC. So this guy will be shorted to ground. So it will be ground like this. And we call this EC ground. We can even, you know, remove it completely, but make it with another color, which is red, so that we know that this was a source before, but we remove it and connect it to ground. So this is an AC ground. We have another guy here, which is VBB. So again, when you when you short VBB, it will it will connect the base to the ground directly. So let's again remove that guy and mark it with red. So you guys know that there was something here before, but in AC we just shorted it. And again, this is AC ground. Okay. And the capacitors will, uh, will be uh, shorted. So again, remove this capacitor and put short circuit with a different color. Okay. Now let's draw the small circuit model. So we start to buy, I will use this one. Alpha IE, here is IE, here is RE, here is the emitter, here is the collector, here is the base. Okay, so here is the base. The base is connected to ground, so. And mark this. Oh, sorry, let me make it, let's make it with another color, for example, green or something. Okay. Then between uh, the emitter and the ground, we have our signal and V signal. So we have our signal and V signal. And you know, we'll mark it. Then between the collector and the ground, we have two branches. We have our L branch, we have our C branch first. Market, and we have our early branch. Good. And before we continue, let's mark where is the input, where is our input, where is our output, and where is the output. Okay, let's go back to. So the input is here. just on the terminal of the source, which is the signal between this point and the ground. Where is our input? Again, our input is the resistance that the source C. So between, again, the terminals of the source between this point and the ground. Where is our O? 
RO is the resistance that the load sees. Here is the terminals of the load between this point and the ground. So we will look between these two points and we will get RO. Good. So let's start by, uh, by our input. Our input, number one, our input. So this is very, very simple. So our input, again, guys, you have here two parts of the circuit. You have this part on the, on the right, and you have this part on the left. And again, in circuit theory, if you have two circuits that are connected with one only one, one point, one node, then they are isolated. Okay, because you know all the circuits in your reverse are connected to ground, but they are isolated. Okay, I mean they are not affecting each other, although they have a common ground, you know, a common point, a common voltage. Okay, so if we look between these two terminals, what we're gonna see? We're gonna see one one resistance which is RE. So R I is equal to R E. And now before we continue, R E we said it's very small. Okay, so if we compare co this to common emitter, if you remember guys with, with common emitter, Ri in common emitter was around R by. And if we go a little bit up here, you see this relation, Re is less than R by. So this is less than Ri of common base, which is Re, is less than our input of common emitter, which is R by. And this is really a very, uh, you know, bad uh, disadvantage for uh, common base amplifiers. And it really limits its applications. So we only use it with applications which, which has very small uh, uh, signal, you know, uh, R signal very small internal systems of the sources, very limited applications, okay? Okay, this is the first characteristic. So let's now go to the second one. And let's divide, by the way, this in two halves. Number two, RO. So we are gonna calculate RO now, after calculating our input. And RO again is the resistance seen by the load. So we're gonna look from the load terminals, okay? And of course, we're gonna cancel any independent source in the other, other part of the circuit. So first, we're gonna imagine that there is, you know, source called Vx, which delivers the current Ix. And of course, Ro is equal to Vx over Ix. And we just commit that the rest of the circuit. So we have RC, then alpha IE, then we have RE here, R signal, and then short. And here we have IE. Okay. Before we continue and find uh, RO, which is Vx on Ix, first we're gonna check Ie first. What is the value of Ie? Remember that we canceled the V signal, so Ie should be zero. But we're gonna again, you know, prove that it's really zero from this loop here, loop one. Okay, so let's change the color to. Uh, so I so in this loop there are two resistances, both have the same current Ie. So uh, the voltage in that resistance plus this one is equal to zero. So R E R E plus I E R signal equal to zero. So taking R E I E as a common factor, this will leave us with R E plus R signal. All of this is equal to zero. So we have two options, either I E equal to zero or R E small plus R signal equal to zero. We know for sure, for sure that our signal is two kilo ohms in that example. Oh, I'm sorry, our, our signal is, you know, is not zero. We assume it's not zero. It's a parameter here. And our E is also not zero. It's equal to VT over IE. Okay, 
VT is not zero, IE is not zero. So that's not possible. The only possible option here is IE is equal to zero. So if IE is equal to zero, then the source alpha IE is also equal to zero. This source here. And when a current source equal to zero, this means it's open circuit. So this will leave us with this, you know, with only RC connected to VXIX. So basically our O, which is VX over IX, is just equal to RC. And before we continue again, if we compare this to, this is a common base, if we compare it to the common emitter, it was also RC. So, RO, common base, equal to RC, equal to RO, common emitter, which is also RC. Good. So what else? Yeah, the common is uh, the, co uh, the open loop voltage gain. So number three, EV naught, open loop voltage gain. So EV naught equal to VO over VI when RL is equal to infinity. Okay, so let's go back here to the equivalent circuit. So now consider that RE is not there. So alpha E is actually flowing, will be flowing in RC and also the current source here because this is now an open circuit, R I R L. So this is VO. So VO in that case is equal to minus alpha IE RC. And remember that V input is, is the voltage across the terminal of, uh, of the source, okay? R signal and V signal between this point and the ground. which in that case, also the voltage of R is small. And the voltage of R is small equal to the current multiplied, it's the current multiplied by its value. So if we look here, V input is equal to, remember that IE flowing from down to up. So the voltage difference is, uh, is negative positive, opposite to V input. So it's minus IE, R is small. So EV node equal to output over V input, IE will go with IE, minus will go with minus. So this will leave us with alpha RC over RE small, RE small over alpha. R is small over alpha equal to R E is V T over I E and I E is I, alpha E is I C. What is this? This is one over G M. So E V note equal to G M R C. This is a common base. So AV node common base equal to GM RC. But how about AV node in common emitter? If we go back, AV node of the common emitter was minus GM RC. Exactly the same value, but there is no phase shift. The output is in, the, is in phase with the input. If this is increasing, this will be increasing. If this is decreasing, this will be also decreasing. Okay, so here is the difference. Values are the same, but there is no fifth shift. So no fifth shift. Between the input and the output. 
okay what else ev so number four av which is vo over v input but now you know rl is not infinity so if we go back to the circuit now we have rl back so vo will have uh, v input is the same there is no change minus ie R is small, but but now V output is minus alpha IE and the RC parallel combination with RL because now alpha IE is flowing in the combination. This is alpha IE or IC is flowing in the combination of RL and RC. Minus will go with minus, IE will go with IE. So this will lead, will lead us to AV equal to GM RC parallel RL. So AV common base GM RC, RC parallel RL. But AV of common emitter, it was minus GM RC parallel RL. So again, same value as the magnitude, but there is no phase shift in common base. So no phase shift. Finally, GV, or the overall voltage gain. Number five, GV. Here is a big difference actually here. Because GV is EV, our input, divided by our input plus our signal. So this is EV. Our E, because our input is our E. If you go back here, our input is equal to our E. Over our E plus our signal. So two differences now. So let's compare EV, RE, RE plus R signal. For common emitter, it was EV, R by, R by plus R signal. Since RE is smaller than R uh, by, then GV of uh, the common base is less than GV of the common emitter. And why is this? Because the input resistance of the common base is really bad. It's really small. Or it's small. Actually, it's equal to R by over beta. Hundred for if if beta is one hundred, this is hundred times less than R by. That's of course, you know, a disadvantage for the common. But there is no phase shift again because EV here is positive, but EV for the common emitter is negative. So again, no phase shift. But you know, largely less than uh, EV. Uh, of common base. Still, there is uh, another uh, advantage for uh, common base. So let's now summarize the advantages and disadvantages, okay? And also uh, uh, state another advantage for common base that we didn't mention so far, okay? So some observations here. Number one, our input equal to our E. This is very small. Compared 
to the common emitter. Number two, RO is equal to RC, same as common emitter. Number three, AV note equal to of the common base, equal to AV note. So let's, yeah, let's see. AV note equal to GM RC, which is equal to AV note of the common emitter. Number four, AV equal to GM RC parallel RL, which is again AV magnitude of the common emitter. Number five, no phase shift between, or let's, let's write it in another way. VO and V input has the same phase, are, are in phase, yeah. V output and V input are in, phase in common emitter vo and v input out of phase one increasing one decreasing you know number six gv of common base let's yeah equal to a V R is small over R is small plus R input. This is much less than A V uh, uh, R by not R E. Of common emitter. Remember that the we said that the input resistance of the common emitter is actually small. So imagine now this is 100 times even smaller. So it's extremely bad. Okay, now let's, you know, dig deep with JV, JV of the common base. It's equal to AV, and AV is GM RC barrel RL multiplied by RE over RE plus R input. So what is RE GM? RE is VT over IE. And GM is actually a IC over VT. VT will go with VT. And IC over IE is actually beta. So this is equal to, so GM and RE is just I'm sorry, alpha, I'm sorry, alpha, not beta. Uh, RC, barrel RL, over RE plus R input. And it is very good char uh, characteristic for the common base. Alpha is actually one. So this can be said that this equal to RC, barrel RL, over RE small brass R input. So this factor is independent of beta or alpha, you know. Alpha is actually approximately one, so it's independent of beta. So that means if beta increases with temperature or decreases, you know, JV will not change. So JV is less sensitive to beta changes. And that's a good, you know, uh, a good characteristic for common base. So common base has bad input resistance. It's always low. So in common emitter, we say that it's moderate to low. This is always low, but it's, less, it's more immune or less sensitive to beta changes rather than, you know, uh, the common emitter. And without uh, any need for 
degenerate resistance or RE, like what we did with, with common emitter. Good. So now we're going to take uh, uh, an example just to feel about the numbers, how the number goes, and how to solve the circuits, uh, common base circuits. Okay, so for this circuit here, we have beta equal to 100. Okay. And as we see, the input is connected to the base and the output is connected to the uh, collector. Okay. So basically it's very simple. Find our input and the voltage gain and assume beta is 100. Okay, so again, we have the AC and DC. And why we need the DC analysis? Because we need to calculate GM and RE small or R by, you know, whatever. So number one, DC analysis. So this current here will be divided into two currents, IC, because it's entering the collector, and IB, because this is entering the base and remember this is open circuit and this is open circuit and this will be short so half milliampere will be equal to ib plus ic which is ie right so ie is equal to half milliampere good and that's all what we need because GM is equal to VT, I'm sorry, IC over VT. So again, since beta is, is big, you know, just assume alpha is equal to one and IC approximately equal to IE. So this will give you uh, 0 0.5 divided by 25. This is 20 milliohm minus one. And R is small, equal to VT over IE, 25 over a half milli. This will give you 50 ohms, very small. As you see guys, very small. And that's all from the uh, AC analysis. Number two, DC analysis, I'm sorry, AC analysis. Okay, so let's, you know, draw the circuit again. We have here some glitch. Let's omit it. Okay, so we're gonna draw the circuit again after, so this guy will be open circuit in EC. This guy will be short, this guy will be short. So let's do it again. So, Here is our L, the capacitor is shorted. Then we are have our signal, then V signal. And we have here the resistance. And the capacitor will be short, so this will be connected to ground. So the base will be shorted now. And let's call this RB. Okay. Good. So let's now draw the small circuit equivalent circuit. I'm gonna use this one here. And this should be a resistor. R is small. I e is flowing in that direction. This is alpha I e or R C, whatever you call it. And here is the base emitter collector. It's a start by the emitters between the emitter and the ground. There is our signal and V signal.
And our signal is known by the way, 75 ohms, very small. And here is why, because we said that because the input resistance of common base is very small, we usually use it in a very limited applications when the signal source has a very small uh, internal resistance, like this example here. The internal resistance is just 75 ohms. Uh, here is the base. The base is connected to ground. Good. And another branch connected to the collector. So there is a resistance between the base and the collector called RB. So this is also drawn. Now the final branch here is between the collector and the ground, which is RL. Good. Remember our input is required. Where is our input? Between this node source uh, first terminal and the ground source second terminal. From here we will, you know, uh, see or determine our I, which is really very simple or very easy. It's our E. This is number one. EV, I think uh, what is was required, I'm sorry, it, it was required GV, the overall voltage gain. Let's check again. Find them and uh, this should be the overall voltage gain. Okay, we're gonna determine both, it's fine. So EV is equal to VO over VI, here is VO. And here is VR. Again, this current is alpha E. And it flows through the combination of R, E, R, B, and R, L. So VO is minus alpha E because it's flowing from down to up or bottom to up. So the voltage difference is opposite to VO. R, B, barrel R, L. And the VI uh, is minus IE, RE small. Again, this is IE is flowing from bottom up, bottom up. So uh, the this will make a voltage difference opposite in direction to VI, but equal in value. So, uh, uh, sorry, not alpha. Uh, IE will go as IE, minus was minus. So this will give us, uh, oh, IE with IE and minus with minus, yes. This will give us, you know, GM, RB, barrel, RL. How GM? Because uh, we can put alpha in the denominator of the denominator. So RE over alpha is actually GM, as we proved it earlier. GV equal to EV, RE small, over our small brass R signal. Let's calculate GM, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we did, we forgot to do that. So from, let's go back to the, oh, we did it, we did it. GM here is, uh, is 20 and R is, is also known 50. Uh, RB is known 100 kilo ohms. Let's go back and check. Yes, 100 kilo ohms. And RL is also known to two kilo ohms. So we can determine this. If we do this, this will be 39. Point 0.2. R is small is 50, so this is equal to 39.2. 50 over 50 plus 75. This will give us uh, 16, I'm sorry, 15, not 16. Point 0.68. Okay, guys. So, uh, let's recap, you know, uh, common base very quick. And the recap is basically that common base is another configuration just like common emitter. It's similar uh, to common emitter uh, in three stuff. Our output is RC. Okay, just like common emitter. AV and AV node is exactly like is a magnitude like common emitter, GMRC, and GMRC 
barrel RL for uh, uh, AV. But the signal is in phase. The output signal is in phase with the input signal. Okay, this is increasing, this is increasing, decreasing, decreasing. This is different from common emitter because AV or AV node or GV was negative. That means that there is amplification, but the output is out of phase with the input. If this is increasing, this will be decreasing. If this is decreasing, this will be increasing. And finally, we deduced that uh, the uh, common base, uh, the overall voltage gain is less sensitive to the change in beta. Why? Because uh, when we did the mass, you know, we have beta from in the numerator and beta in the denominator, you know, our beta plus one in the numerator. So this would give us alpha and the alpha is approximately one. It's just like a constant. Okay, so the change in beta will not change uh, the overall voltage gain. Okay, guys, uh, thank you very much and have a great day. See you on Tuesday next week. Bye-bye.